Okay, in this video, I want to talk about where buoyant force comes from. So in a previous video, I actually did an example where I had this container that was filled with water and inside of the container, there was this block that was tethered down to the bottom of the container by a piece of string. And when we drew the free body diagram of this block, so I'm going to draw the free body diagram here. We had a buoyant force acting up, which I called F sub B. We had the weight of the block coming down, and then we had the tension in the string coming down. And I got a few people reaching out and they had asked, well, why don't we consider the weight of the water above the block and even the weight of the water below the block because the block is submerged in water. So there is weight from this body of water right here acting on top of the block. And they are right, there is weight acting on top of the weight or the block, uh, but we did include that weight or the weight difference in this buoyant force. So the definition of buoyant force is the difference between the force at the bottom and the top uh, caused by the pressures at the top and on the bottom. So if we look at this example right here, this block is submerged in a body of water so that there is pressure all over this block on every single side, on the top, the bottom, the left, the right. And you'll notice intuitively that the pressures on the left and on the right side of the blocks, they cancel out because they're symmetric. But the pressure here at this line on top of the block is a little bit less than the pressure here on the bottom, right? The deeper you go down in water, the higher the pressure. And the higher the pressure, the higher the force acting on a surface. So you can see that the force acting on the bottom of the block due to the pressure at the bottom is a little bit bigger than the force acting on top of the block. And so again, this buoyant force that I'll call F sub B is equal to the force of the bottom minus the force at the top. And those forces are due to the pressure at those surfaces times the area, right? So pressure times area gives us force. So in this example or this video, I want to derive this buoyant force. And in a lot of other videos, I've been saying that the buoyant force, F sub B, is equal to the weight of the liquid displaced. In this case, it's water, so I'll just call it W sub W. So the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water acting on the object. So how do we go from here to there? Well, that's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, so I have two diagrams uh, drawn here uh, on the left and on the right, and they are the same situation. Uh, on the left, we have this body of water, and there is a block fully submerged in this liquid. And on the right, I just have this dotted outline here, which represents the amount of water that got displaced due to this block. So this volume and this volume are exactly the same. And if we were to draw the free body diagram of this object, at the very bottom we have pressure, right? And that pressure is going to cause some sort of a force, which I'll call F sub bottom, and that's equal to P bottom times A. And at the top, we have another force called F top, and that's equal to P top times A. And then we also have the weight of the block. So this is mass of the block times gravity. And due to this object being in static equilibrium, we know that all these forces balance out. So all the forces going up must equal all the forces going down. In other words, F sub bottom must equal mass times gravity of the block plus F sub top. Okay, cool. But how do we get buoyant force? How do we get buoyant force? Well, remember, Buoyant force is the weight of the fluid displaced. In other words, all of this fluid has a mass and therefore a weight, and that is the buoyant force that's going to act on top of this block and push it upwards. So on the displaced water diagram, I'm going to have something similar. I'm going to have F sub top, which is the force due to the pressure at the top of that area times area. So this is equal to pressure top times a. And at the bottom, we have F sub bottom, and that's equal to the pressure at the bottom times the area. Now I'm going to label a couple things. So this block has a height of D, 
and I'm going to say the distance from the surface level of the water down to the bottom of the block. Uh, I'll call that h. So we'll need those in a little bit, but I want to go back to the concept of pressure. Now, if you remember, pressure is equal to rho g h. Now, this h is not this h that I've drawn here. Uh, this is just a side note. So just this is on its own, rho g h. The mass density of the fluid times gravity times the depth, right? The deeper you go, the higher the pressure. So based off that, we can calculate p top. Now, p top is going to be the mass density of the water times gravity times the distance from the surface down to the point that we're studying, which is the top of the block or the top of the volume that we're looking at. And if this is d and this is h, then that must mean this distance is h minus d. So this is going to be h minus d. Cool. Well, what about the pressure at the bottom? So the pressure at the bottom is more or less the same. You have the mass density of the water times g. And now the distance from the surface down to the bottom, well, that's h. So I'm just going to call that h. So cool, we have pressure top and we have pressure bottom. We can take those two terms and plug them into their respective equations here. And we can use those forces then to figure out what the buoyant force is. Because remember, the buoyant force is going to be equal to the pressure or the force at the bottom minus the force at the top. Cool, so we can do that. So I'm going to write that here. The buoyant force is F bottom minus F top. And we know that F bottom is P bottom times A minus F top is P top times A. So P bottom we calculated right there. That was the mass density of the water times G times H. Uh, and then we have times A minus P top, which is this term right here. That was the mass density of the water times gravity times H minus D, and all of that times A. So if we keep going, we have mass density of the water times gravity times H times A minus mass density of water times G times H times A plus mass density of water times G times D times A. And you can see that this term and this term cancel out because they're exactly the same. So this is going to go to zero. And what we're left with is the mass density of the water times gravity times D times A. And that is going to be equal to the buoyant force. So if I scroll down a little bit, uh, I want to bring up the concept of mass density. So if you remember, mass density in general is equal to mass volume. And in this case, we know that the volume of this space right here is going to be the surface area A times D. So we have an area times a height or a depth. So the volume is equal to A times D. If you look at this equation right here, there is our A times D term. So I can rewrite this as the mass density of water times gravity times volume. Now, if you look at this term right here, the mass density definition, that's mass over volume. And if I rewrite that, I can rewrite that as mass is equal to the mass density times volume, right? I just multiplied by V on both sides, and I get this equation. So we can substitute this in for the mass density times the volume in this equation. So this is going to be mass of water times gravity. And there you go. That is why the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the water displaced. And the weight of the water displaced is mass times gravity. The mass of the water, which is all of this mass right here, times gravity.